March 25th, 2020. Um, we just had our um, first online lecture exam too um, yesterday and the day before, Monday and Tuesday. And I, I know for a lot of you it was really stressful, but you know, don't give up. Um, so um, your score should be posted on Canvas. Remember, your total score out of 200 is the combination of those three columns. So um, you got a score out of 178, and then you had an, an adjustment, and then 12 bonus points. Okay, folks, so we are finishing up Microbial Genetics Part 2. Um, so the start of Lecture Exam 3 information will be right after the operons. So starting Lecture Exam 3, we'll have mutations, horizontal gene transfer, which we just covered in, in a previous movie. And then um, today we are going to finish with a short movie um, or audio recording on plasmids and transposons and antibiotic resistance. But before we do that, I just wanted to um, um, present this um, question and so well, I'll just read it. So E. coli is found naturally in the human large intestine, and there it is beneficial. However, the strain designated E. coli 0157H7 produces a shiga toxin. How did E. coli acqu acquire this gene from Shigella? And so folks, just so hopefully I won't be um, too wordy. So um, E. coli 0157H7 acquired the shiga toxin gene from its cousin, Shigella dysenteria, through um, transduction and bacteriophage delivered the shiga toxin gene from Shigella to E. coli. Um, and until we do the virus unit and we introduce bacteriophage replication, um, this won't make a lot of sense to you. But um, just to put on the back burner, um, this transduction was called specialized transduction. Um, and the result is the shiga toxin gene was inserted into the E. coli chromosome um, with the help of what's called a prophage. All right, and again, that will make a little bit more sense after our virus introduction. So the shiga toxin inhibits eukaryotic ADS ribosomes um, with the E. coli growing in the intestinal tract. One of the clinical signs would, would be a bloody diarrhea. So especially with the little kids, folks, if they develop a bloody diarrhea, I would think of it as a medical emergency. And I would want, um, I'd want the child to be screened for a shiga toxin producing E. coli. The um, toxin can be absorbed into the blood vessels. It'll cause blood vessel damage. Um, and as a consequence, we're going to get a hemolytic anemia. Red blood cells are going to lice. Um, and additionally, the toxin, when absorbed, can cause kidney damage, all those delicate little capillaries in the kidneys. So in some, um, some folks, the combination of all these problems results in what's called HUS, or hemolytic uremic syndrome. And this definitely can be fatal in little children. Um, older folks are also at risk for um, serious damage from E. coli 0157H7. Um, the transmission is fecal orally. So the E. coli 0157H7, a real common reservoir, are cattle. So wherever cattle feces goes, the, um, if the E. coli is present, if the cattle feces contaminates food or drinking water, right? that would be a way for us um, to become infected if we were to um, eat the fecal contaminated food or water. A big problem is is when um, cattle are slaughtered, there's off, often fecal contamination of the carcass of the meat. And um, so we always, always want to be really careful working with raw beef, really any kind of raw meat, because there could be fecal pathogens present. Um, it's a big problem here in California agriculture. At one time it was known as the hamburger disease, but um, more recently, we're starting to see it associated with contaminated leafy greens, um, spinach, um, lettuce, onions. And, and the problem is these are vegetables often added to salad, so they aren't cooked. So this, this has caused big problems here in California. So again, folks, we want to be really careful working with any kind of uh, raw meat. Um, if we grind the meat, that means the fecal contaminating bacteria are going to get inside the ground meat. So you have to make sure that your ground meat is cooked really, really well. You don't want to serve um, medium rare or rare ground meat to little kids, for example, or to older folks, anybody that is at high risk. Um, and again, another big concern is fecal contaminated fruit like apples and then veggies. So folks, I'll 
I'll just, I'll try to make these videos shorter. I know they go on way too long. So let me stop here and then um, we'll, we'll um, in the next video, we'll talk about plasmids and transposons and then probably one last little video on antibiotic resistance mechanisms. Okay. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but um, our cat Eloise is keeping me company here and she's purring away.